Listen, I was super excited to, to come to church today just because I really feel like God put something in my heart. And just so you know, um, I, I don't always, um, I don't use terminology when I speak like God's really putting, some, sometimes we get used to just saying things like, you know, God really put this. I don't, that's never cliche with me. If you ever hear me say, I feel like God wants me to say, that's not a generality I use. Uh, sometimes as preachers can get in habits and using terminologies. It's something I absolutely feel. And I want you to know that when it comes to church and church leadership and leading a church, truthfully, um, from my experience and the people I know and my family, and all my brothers are pastors and tons of friends that are pastors, you're really not as in charge as you might think. We're always leading at the pace of what God wants us to do. Can I get a good amen? I can't build the church just because I want to. I can't shift seasons just because I want to. I can't survey, excuse me, the crowd and how everyone's feeling and attendance and, and just do what I want because I see it in my eye. I found out a long time ago I'm never, ever going to do well at leading people in godly things without listening to to the Holy Spirit of God, which means that you can't just build a church because you want to. You can't just change seasons of happiness because you want to. When there's seasons of growth in the church and there's seasons of growth in our lives, you can't just, you, you can't just switch gears because you want to or because it's not happy enough or you want to create a brighter mood. Things of God usually and always operate in seasons just like every other season. Can I get an amen? Which means that when we follow God, we realize that there's all different kinds of seasons that we walk through. And it's so important to know what season we're in now. And every time I've seen, sensed a big shift in our church, it hasn't just been because more people are coming, even though that's usually a sign of revival. It's not just because the building is full, even though that's a sign of revival. It's usually the thing I trust the most is when I feel God's spirit tell me things are about to change. It's the trust that I have and I hope you have that when God tells you in your heart, get ready for things to change, you can get excited because God said it even if it hasn't happened yet. It's that I don't need to see it to believe it because I walk by faith and not by sight. <clears throat> it is knowing that when God says it, it's done and accomplished before you ever walk it out. But when I want to do it and I just want to have it because I want to have it, I can't always do what I, if it was up to me, I would skip all the painful stuff. Can I get an amen? <laughs> I would skip all the heartbreak, all the frustration, all the solving the fights and selling everyone down and all the dissension and all the fear and all the worry. I just move on to the fun stuff. Anyone else like me? I just want to go to the fun stuff church. <laughs> I want to have the fun stuff life. But there are seasons in life. We just, we've just walked through one ourselves. Our country has. I guess our world has. You go through COVID. Anyone remember when we were just at home all the time? <laughs> During COVID, all debating online whether you should wear a mask or whether you shouldn't. And we'd make these big stands. I'm not wearing a mask. <clears throat> Don't, and if I go, I'm, you can't make me wear a mask. And then someone got sick in your family. And then all of a sudden, you start wearing a mask. <laughs> you, you were so tough and you were so bold until someone got sick. The government can't tell me to wear a mask. Someone got sick. Yeah, I don't mind. I mean, if it makes people, other people feel comfortable, I'll put on a mask. We're sitting at home, just watching online. Everyone's got like screen deprivation. Your eyes. You bought those glasses when you look at the screen too long. You got to wear. It. Everyone's just online. Church online was through the roof. I remember one Sunday we had eighteen hundred people or eighteen hundred views in our church. We literally reached more people one Sunday at home because everyone, I don't know if it's because they wanted God, wanted church, or they had been home so long, they had just watched everything else on TV and thought, I don't know, I'll try my friend's church they posted. I have no idea. There's all kinds of seasons, and it's important we know when they are and what's happening. Now, there's natural seasons. 
But then there's also spiritual seasons, and they're not always the same. So there's natural seasons, right? Well, there's supposed to be natural seasons. Winter, summer, fall, and spring is supposed to be. And then there's spiritual seasons where God has you sometimes in a holding pattern. Now, how I many of there's some seasons you're like taking new ground? There's other seasons you're like, just hold the fort. I just got to hold my position. Like you're holding the push in a big rock uphill, and you're like, I don't know if I'm going to make it any further today. I just know I can't go backwards today. But I, and I can't, um, we believe as a church that you can be spirit-filled, the spirit of God, and we believe as a church you can be spirit-led. And some people might see that as, oh, wow, we're just going to be led by whatever the pastor feels. Yeah, that's kind of what we believe Scripture teaches. We can all be, and you can be in your area of authority and leadership in your family. We can be and should be spirit-filled and spirit-led. What that means is the Spirit of God knows what's going to happen tomorrow when we don't. That God prepares us for things before they happen if we'll pay attention. So when the bad thing happens, you realize, you've got to be kidding me. My God has prepared me all the way. It doesn't happen because of chance. It doesn't always happen because of strategy. It almost always happens because of the plan of God and be led by the Holy Spirit. Can I get a big amen? Well, listen, this morning I want to look at Ecclesiastes chapter 3. Ecclesiastes chapter 3. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verses 1. It says, for everything there's a season. Someone say everything. Yeah, for everything. I mean, there's basically a time for everything. There's a time for everything, the scripture says. And a time for every activity under heaven. Verse 2. There's a time to be born. There's a time to die. There's a time to plant. There's a time to harvest. There's a time to kill and a time to heal. And some of you, um, when you were trying to get to church and you got stuck in traffic, you felt that whole time to kill thing. You're like, is that really in the Bible? You, you felt it. Come on, where's my road rage people at? You're working on it. You're, God, Jesus loves you. You're holding the wheel and you're saying Jesus, but you're not saying Jesus because you're praising him. You're saying Jesus so you don't just turn your car into someone else. All right. A time to kill and a time to heal. There's a time to tear down. There's a time to just go, this season's done. I, I'm, I'm tearing stuff down. And there's a time to rebuild and a time to build again. Ecclesiastes 3 says there's a time for everything. There are so many seasons in life. And in, in 1 Chronicles 12.32, it's not on the screen. 1 Chronicles 12.32, it talked about David's mighty men. And it talked about this group of people called the sons of Issachar. And the sons of Issachar, it says in verse 32, 1 Chronicles 12.32, it says the sons of Issachar were men who understood the times with knowledge in what Israel should do. In other words, you want to be someone that is like the sons of Issachar, where more than what people are saying, what, what the government's saying, what's happening in the news media, what's happening in government, that there's these spiritual things happening, and God is always moving his people. Just so you know, God does not always lead us through Fox News or CNN. Can I get an Amen. I know all those Instagram memes about Christianity are fun and you like and you subscribe and Joe Rogan and all the podcast people, but God doesn't go through all the podcasters to tell you what season it is or to inform you what to do. God's pretty sure exactly what he wants to do. He's written it down and made it plain. And if we'll gather around this book and seek his spirit, he'll make it clear exactly what we should do next. And may I throw in, if you keep getting all the other information, you might find out you've missed the spirit of God because you're filling your mind with intellectual thoughts of a man which can be valuable, but it's definitely not the Spirit of God leading you. The sons of Issachar said they were men who understood the times. The sons of Issachar were men that traveled with the Hebrew people or the Israelites, and they would begin to sense what God is doing and understanding the season that they're in. Can I get a little amen? And know what to do in that season. We believe as a church in being spirit-filled and spirit-led. Galatians 5.25, it says, since we are living by the Spirit, that means we should be living by the Spirit. Literally living. L to the I to the V to the ing. 
We should be living for real. We should, I mean, we should be living by it. Not visiting the Spirit. Not, ah, it's Easter. Man, I'm going to roll through and check out on Jesus, you know. He came, you know, he came through on that third day, so I got to show up for him. I mean, not, not a one-day visit. We should be living by it. It should be the source of our life. It literally is the well that is dug through prayer and understanding and worship. That once we hear that the water comes, we're just living by, we're just drinking by. God, what are you saying today? What are you talking about? What do you want me to do today? We should be living by the Spirit. And he says, let us follow the Spirit's leading in every part of our life. So Spirit-filled living isn't kooky. Now, no, no, no doubt, church people sometimes have made it kooky. I mean, I know, you know, th- there are some people I talk to, I want to believe that I love Jesus. I want to believe I operate at a decent level with the Holy Spirit. There are some people talking about stuff I'm not even sure what the heck they're talking about. You ever seen someone that's too saved or oversaved? I mean, sometimes they make it weird, right? Uh, but we should be living by this. In other words, this should be the thing you trust. You being led by the Holy Spirit ought to be something you trust. You ought to be like, that's God, I'm doing it. Because if God said it, and God's leading me to it, so God says tons of stuff in his word that we should all listen to, read, and adhere to. But the Holy Spirit directs us what season we're in, what scriptures to highlight, what things we need at the moment to get us through this season and to the next. Can I get a little amen? So we believe in that. I get really, really excited when the Holy Spirit tells me, no matter what I want to do with the church, my ideas, my goals, I always have to take a back seat to whatever God says because I have learned that when I say something, nothing really happens. <laughs> when I have an idea, no one really cares that much. It's not that, okay, not, not so loud. That hurts my feelings. I'm a person. I'm a person. When I want to do something, it don't really matter. My, my idea is I could make you clap for it, but I can't make God bless it. What, what men want to do, but when the Holy Spirit says something, I get excited now. When we were in this room hosting a city pastor's luncheon, we had some tables set up right over there, and we had all the pastors here. I was talking to Pastor Don Pritchard, my buddy up the hill. I said, what's you up to, Pastor? He says, we're raising $300,000 to renovate and remodel our church. I went, oh, that's awesome. And then the Holy Spirit, just like that, said, and you need to raise $350,000 for for your new worship facility. See, no matter how much I knew we needed to move, no matter how much I know we need the room, and, and not that it's always horrible to just do the things you need to do. I'm not talking against that. But when the Holy Spirit said, you need to raise 350000 at that moment, I got excited. Now, I had had tons of ideas of my own, none of which would have probably ever worked, so I did not try them. Can I get an amen? But when the Holy Spirit said, do it, I began to get excited. Because now I knew it wasn't a me idea, hoping God would bless it. It was a God idea, him hoping I would bless it and function and do what he said. So we live by the Holy Spirit. And since we have been giving finances towards it, since we've been doing it, God has begun to bless our church. Um, Somehow we were were looking for a bigger building, and God said, just for fun, we'll give you a whole other campus just for free. See, a lot of people think that you have to just, on your way, God didn't want us to raise the money that we needed. God wanted to raise the money that he said. Often people misunderstand obedience. They, the obedience says when God says something, it sounds so stupid and doesn't sound like enough money. And how are we going to do it? It doesn't make sense. God doesn't want you to do, raise the money for him. He wants you to do what he said no matter what it sounds like. Because God wants to know if we trust in what he says or we, or we kind of heard him and we'll do what you said, but I think you're missing some numbers. Because a new facility may cost more than that. As we begin to just focus on obeying what he said, not what we think, what he said. All through the scripture, every time they do what he said, no matter how crazy it sounded, he would show up. On our way to raising the finances to what he said, God says, as you're looking for a new worship facility, and God put in them heart to do it, we're raising the money. God said, let me just show you what kind of God I am. 
I'm not only going to give you your new worship facility, let me just let me just give you a whole other campus and three and a half acres just to bless you along the way, just to let you know that when you focus on what I say to do, I'm going to do for you things that you don't even know I can do for you. You need to know that uh, Pastor Nathan, who you know we're, we're, we got a great relationship, before he gave us that property, we probably hadn't talked more than two sentences in five years. It wasn't some buddy-buddy program and, hey, man, I think I'm leaving. You want to help this church or what? I was doing my, my friend's funeral, and by the Spirit of God said, call him, even though we hadn't talked in a long time. The Lord opens up doors when you follow his Spirit. If you're trying to make everything work in your marriage and in your family on your own, if you're trying to put together, you know, pray once, uh, put 20 bucks like PC said in the offer when it comes by, ex- equals expect great things, you need to know that this, God wants us to live by the Spirit of God, which means that He wants in this crazy world of tons of messaging, tons of ideas, tons of groups, tons of communities. God says, I need my voice to be the only one that you're going to listen to. And God will purposely let everything else we do fail for the sake of going, that don't work, that don't work, that don't work. Maybe you'll try me now. And when we try his voice and it works, we're going, now we're talking. I'm going to begin to live by the Spirit of God. Can I get an amen? So what is this new season? Well, I would, just the other day, uh, we've, been, we've been at the other campus fixing it up and kind of worshiping God and just trying to steward that place well. I mean, if you know me, I, I, I love excitement. I mean, you know, I, I could make five people eating donuts for Jesus. I could make that a party. I love, you know, we celebrate everything in our church because I think everything's worth celebrating. But we've been down there kind of working. We've been down there two days a week, sometimes even three, working on stuff, building stuff. Man, you got the boys down there working. Some people, the guys are building fences over there. Curly, thank you so much for you and all the men went down there and helped build. We're trying to get that. We're, what are we doing? We're stewarding now the thing that God gave us. When God gives you something, you pray, God, what do you want us to do with it? That we're stewarding it well. And right in the middle of just fixing it up, and I kind of had some thoughts of what it should be and what we should do. And as we're kind of moving forward, just, I think it was two days ago, I'm just walking around the house and minding my own business. And I just feel the Holy Spirit say, is the season of advancement for your church. For my church, for Church of Lawrence, this is a season of advancement. <laughs> You have to understand why that's such a big deal to me. That's not a big deal so I could just come tell you to get you motivated. That's a big deal to me. I hope you're motivated. That's a big deal to me because until God says it, I'm aware it ain't going to work. I could try to advance all I want to, but only God knows the times and the seasons. Come on, church. And God said this is a season of advancement for your church. When God put that in my spirit, I got super excited because I feel like I'm one of the sons of Issachar. Danny Issy, that's who I am right now. Little Danny Issy, just putting it down, knowing the times and seasons. God gave me some intel. And when the Holy Spirit says it, I get excited. And here's why I get excited. Because at 52 years old, every time I've ever heard the Lord say something, I'm trying to tell you, Every single time it has happened and it has worked. Ask my mom and dad. Every time God has said something, no matter how crazy it sounded, no matter how off the wall and it didn't make sense, when God said it, I knew it was about to happen because I knew I couldn't do it. But when the Lord says it's your season, then you know it's your season. And the Lord says this is a season of advancement. If you're taking notes today, Number one, we're stepping into a season of uh, advancement and expansion. And we're not doing it because we want to. We're not doing it, I mean, obviously we want to, but we're not doing it because we're trying to be cool. We're not doing it because we want multiple campuses so we can say, no, no. We're doing it because we are living by the Spirit of God, and the Spirit of God says it's time to advance. And if you want to keep it real, some of us need the Lord to announce it's a season of, of, of it. Because some of us just been doing the merry-go-round for a long time. Ain't nothing changed in a long time. Same old, same old. No new scenery. No, no new fruit. Same old situation. Maybe I'll go to church on Sunday. I'll go on Sunday. I'll go on the small room. Some of us need the Lord to announce it's a season of advancement. 
Because if you trust the Spirit of God, and if this bears witness with you, I can't make it, but hopefully you'll pray and God will tell you the same thing. But if you feel this in your spirit, when God says it's a season of advancement and expansion, it ought to get us excited because some of us have been at home for about a year and a half just watching everything online. <laughs> some of y'all were just excited to see sunlight with other people. Ah. Oh. I remember when COVID hit, I would drive down the street. Literally, it looked like 43,000 people, according to the city, 43,000 go in front of our church every single day on the street. I remember during COVID going by, I mean, there was no one out. I mean, I mean, no one was even out. Yeah, I ran every red light. I didn't even see cops. I just, I thought it was God saying, you can do what you want. The road is yours. We're stepping into a season of advancement and, and, and expansion. And I, hope, I just want to take a quick second on that. Because if you don't watch it, you're going to get stuck at one place of growth in the Lord. And you, you just kind of hit your lid and you stop. You do the same old, same old, same old. And when the Lord says it's time, to, you, you have, nothing's really changed. Still got the same struggles. I still kind of go through the same thing. I, I, you know, my, if you're on a ministry team, our ministry team hasn't really gotten any bigger, haven't really made any new leaders, haven't really made any new disciples, just kind of the same. And if you want to know how a church starts slowing down and stop becoming what God, the kingdom of God should be an ever-growing thing. We get attacked and we lose some folk from here, here time to time, but the kingdom of God is an ever-growing, ever-expanding thing. If a man falls in love with a woman, sooner or later, they're going to have babies, dogs, houses, and bills. How many of this whole thing is going to expand in Jesus' name? You go from having two dishes to having 42. You got an apartment. You got like four or five dishes. You got a house. Then you got to move, and your garage is full of stuff from 10 years of living there. How many of those everything expands sooner or later? You need to know God is wanting to expand this. I can feel it in my spirit. I see it in the opportunities that God is giving us. And you need to know that God doesn't want, when God says it's time for the church to expand in advance, that is not a message for the goal. God never, ever gives the church collectively a word that doesn't include us individually. <laughs> Which means that when God says, I want you to advance and grow, and it is time to just take some new territory, that doesn't mean, well, that's for the church, that's not for me. Newsflash. You are the church. You ever hear people complaining about the church? I just wish the church would stop being so dumb. And you're like, newsflash, my friend, you the church. So why don't you stop being, no, don't do it. too far. Why don't you stop being? Yeah, you, you need to know that. We can feel in our spirit God's given us opportunities. It's a season of expansion, which means that with every new season, God includes you. God including you. There's not one person in this room that God doesn't have a plan for and personally want to see you grow and expand. God wants to see you beat, win some of the things that have been winning over you lately. God wants to see you overcome some things. You know how we keep saying we're fine all the time? How are you fine? How are you fine? How are you fine? Some of us are just lying, lying, lying. You ain't fine. You can't sleep. Your 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 things are going wrong in the marriage. Things are going wrong in your life. You've got doubt. You've got nightmares and night terrors and fears and concerns. Sin is knocking on your door. The enemy's trying to divide our families, divide our churches. It's time for us to expand and stop just getting our rear ends kicked by the enemy all the time. I want to live by the spirit, not live by my feelings, not live by my friendships. And do what the Lord says, and then I'll mature into being someone that is strong and someone that can handle stuff. I've been through a few storms in my life. I didn't like some of the seasons in my life. I didn't like hearing that I was diagnosed with Tourette syndrome. That wasn't like, yay, great doctor visit. Give me a sucker. Let's go home. That was No, when they tell you you have a chemical imbalance in your body and you're going to twitch and stutter, that is not the greatest thing you want to hear. I wish I could have fast forward that season of my life and God let me go through it and for, for whatever reason I didn't get, I mean, I'm, I'm a ton better than I ever was, but you just need to know that I look back and go, God, that season that you let me go through, 
I'm grateful for that because even though everything in my life didn't change, you know what did change? I found out that there was a God that even though my body wasn't obeying, if I would obey him, that God could use my life and make it count for something. You got to start removing your limitations if you want to advance and expand. You need to stop saying what you're not. I'm not pretty, I'm not smart, I'm not called, no one wants me, no one ever calls me. Well, with that attitude, I understand why. Walk around and tell everyone, Caesar, why don't you like me, man? I mean, you got, I got, you got this new house, you got tacos everywhere, people are coming over, you're tagging. Wow, that's great, Caesar. Man, I don't know why you don't ever call, I don't know why. If I just keep badgering him, about what he doesn't do for me, first of all, selfish, hello. If I just keep, do you think he's going to want to, want to, you know, now he's going to do it out of guilt and obligation. I don't want, listen, no, no, we have to mature to the place where no one's doing stuff for you out of guilt or obligation. We need to become whole in Christ where people want you around because you bring life to the room. You bring joy to the room. If I have to guilt trip you to let me come over, maybe I shouldn't guilt trip you. Maybe I should just let the love of Jesus Christ be all on me. So you're like, you know what, when PD's around, man, it just seems like it's a little bit fun around here. He's always encouraging people. God wants to expand you personally. Come on, y'all. He wants to bring. You think God is through? No offense, but sometimes we can look in the mirror and go, I know God is good and I have purpose. But real talk, evaluating my life, he obviously isn't through. (laughs) Because if this is his finished work, (laughs) all right, I'll leave that there. Stepping into a new season of expansion, man. God has just stirred my spirit to go forward. Just a few days ago. And it's not just on one front. It's not just the other campus. It's not just this campus. It's on all fronts. I just feel the Holy Spirit say, get ready on all fronts. You're about ready to advance. And some people, you, you only need to understand this. When you, when you go to a church that is led by the Spirit of God, not just a man of God that does what he wants to do, you need to understand we don't get to control nor choose what happens. When you follow God, you don't get to choose or pick the best option for you or the most popular option in the crowd. You just do what the Lord says. And either the Lord will show you through this, oh, my gosh, we're hearing from the Lord or not, but uh, God stirred my spirit to go forward on not on one front, but all fronts. Number two, man, we are recruiting workers and building teams in preparation for the revival to come. I feel like God is just, even though I've been here for 23 years and we've been working hard, I just feel like God just shot a brand new gun in the air and said, all right, let's go. It's that next level. It's that next season. You know why? You and me both have people that we know that don't know Jesus Christ that need to know Jesus Christ. We, you know the, the loved ones that you want to see saved? Let's build a church, the, the kind of church they can come into and feel welcome. No matter what color they are. No matter what their background is. Let them come into church. Let them feel the love of Jesus. The good news of Jesus. Let them know that we love Jesus and we're not that weird. And when that door shuts, we're not bringing a goat up on the altar. You know, people don't, weird things about church, let them know you can come here, not believe like we do. We're going to love you and teach you the good news of Jesus. It's time to stop being limited by what we've always done and believe for all he can do. But we got to take the limitations off our mind so we personally, we corporately can move forward. So we are recruiting workers. Man, you might just see me on social media sometime going, anyone in the area that's not going to church and you want to meet me, if you, if you want to become a part of a church and help us, meet me at this time and this place. We're going to start recruiting workers. You know why? The Bible says that the harvest is ripe, just the laborers are few. People want to come to church, but we need to do more than come. We need to become the church. So we're going to be recruiting workers, building teams in preparation for the revival to come. Everything that's been stagnant and not growing, that season is over in Jesus' name. The limitations, if you're a captain, you're a team lead, all, you know, well, I've got, I've got 10 people on my team. Well, it's time to get 20. Well, I mean, I think 10 is enough. No, no, it's not. <laughs> it's not. Not for where we're going and what we're going to do. No, we're going to be ready to advance and we're going to need people to serve. Adam, get ready to double that usher team in Jesus' name. 
man, we got more, our worship teams expanding. We got, we got some more people coming on board. Our own Delea, our own Delea right now is leading worship down at the other campus over there. I mean, she was, I mean, we got musicians. We got musicians that are moving around. We're going to have them at this campus, at that campus, and we're going to have someone at the new church. Why is this so important? Because the Lord said, it's time to stop doing what you've been doing, and it's time to advance, not me, not you. It's time to advance the kingdom of God. Some people don't want to be bothered by God's advancement because you think it's going to take more out of you. If you think this is going to be more work for you, then just watch the rest of us. Because God is not calling you to a hardship, not no, no. God's calling you to a vision. Vision's something you want to do. It's not something anyone makes you do. And excuse me, I'm 52, but doing this since I'm 19. If you don't mind, I'm still going to live my life with vision from God. I don't want to do ministry any other way. I don't want to become old and predictable. I don't want to go. I know, you know, I ask, you know, I know people, they go to their, well, here's my file of sermons. I preach that one. I'm just going to put a new, no, no. I'm not pulling out an old sermon to preach every Sunday because I'm wore out. I'm not led by responsibility. I'm led by vision, and I want to be responsible with it. Church, I'm trying to tell you there's something that when God drops in your heart, you just can't wait to do it. I just feel like God hit the gun and we're at the race car, we're at the racetrack. Beep, beep, and we just hit green. Everything that's been stagnant, not growing, get ready for it to change. Everything that you've given up on personally, get ready for it to change. Because God doesn't need your past and doesn't consult it when he wants to turn the page in your life. He just, when he decides to turn the page, he'll turn it because he turns it. He'll do it when he decides to do it. And we serve him and we be patient while he's doing it. Everything that's been stagnant, not growing, get ready for it to grow. Every kind of limitation in your mindset what we can do, what we can afford, what we, you know. Some of us love to live in a very, and I don't think it's just limited. I think we would like to use the word comfortable. <laughs> How many likes comfortable things? How many's got that couch, that chair? You know you should throw it away. <laughs> you know it. People come over and look at the front room and go, that must be comfortable <laughs> because it's so ugly. <laughs> And it's so old. <laughs> How many got one of them chairs you're like, I'm not throwing this away. I know some men in this room, I would rather die before I throw. This is going, put this in my coffin with me. This is my chair. I know we like comfortable. But you need to know that when you're following God, I know we use the term God will bring you into uncomfortable situations. And I totally get that. But can I just suggest to you that when you really believe what he says, Maybe it's not so uncomfortable. Maybe it's just exciting to see what he wants to do next in your life. We're going to reach some people in Citrus Heights, and we're not done. We are not shifting our focus from here to there. No, no, no. We are not taking away from here to there. Absolutely not. No, no. No, no, no. We're going to build both in Jesus' name. We're going to build both in Jesus' name. We're going to steward everything God has put in our hands well. We're not gonna. We're not gonna split our staff down the middle, and we're not gonna bring hat. No, 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 no. We're not doing that. We're gonna build one here and build one there. We're gonna build a team in this church, in this house, that can minister to everyone here, minister to everyone there. And then when we go get this new building in Jesus' name, we'll have more. You know why? Because if we only need what we have, we'll never have a need to develop anyone else. There are people sitting in this church today I know that have gifts and callings, and they've told me, Pastor, when you're ready, I'm ready. Newsflash, I'm ready. We're ready. Yeah, this year we're going to start a communications class. If you feel called to preach, if you feel called to speak, if you feel called to do announcements, we're calling your number. Uh, we'll be teaching a communications class. If you want to get better at speaking in front, find comfortability, be able to communicate the gospel or even announcements, we got a class for you and sign up for it. It's coming. We're our captains and team leads, we had one of our first all-staff meetings, I think it was last month. We took August off. I, I think we had 30... 
36 or so. You know we have 36 people that are either a captain or a team lead leading this church? Clap it up for all of our leaders here. That's a lot of people. That's a lot of people. Yeah, this year we're going to have more outreach opportunities than we have ever had before. I don't have time to give you all the information, but we've already got some stuff lined out. Our Del Paso Heights campus is going to be a church campus and an outreach center. Can I get an amen? So no matter so no matter where we go as a church, no matter what location we're in, we'll always have a place to reach people, always have a place to feed people, and we... Uh, from what I'm seeing and what I'm feeling and what I know I've already got planned and pissing on the counter, we will do more outreach in the next year and a half than we've probably done in five years combined. I absolutely believe that in Jesus' name. You know why? You know why? Because the pastor wants to do it. No, I've been wanting to do it all along. But because God said, now is the time to advance, that's what we're going to do. This is pretty cool. Right after this service, I'm actually going over to the Del Paso Heights campus. Go ahead and put that up, the next slide. We're doing a dream team night at Del Paso Heights right after this. So right after this, we're going to head over. Hopefully we'll have 10, 15 people over there ready to join the dream team down there. So we're going to build the people. We have about 70-plus people right now. We have about 70-plus on our dream team. We used to have almost 100 so how many knows we need to get back to that 100, 105 mark? You know why? Because the Bible says you can't reach. And what's funny is most of us, watch this, we have to be very careful that once we're reached for the gospel, that we don't lose the desire to reach others. Because your testimony is full of pointing at someone else that spent the time, prayed the prayers, Shared with you what tithes and offerings about. A place you could drag your husband and say, here's where our money is. Now give your soul to Jesus. <laughs> Don't ever want to become stagnant. Churches that become stagnant, even though the Spirit of God is moving, you need to know that the Spirit of God does not only want to fill you and bless you for the sake of just you. We are to be a light to the world, not just a light in the mirror. God wants to use us to reach people. Why does this matter? Because we believe, according to Scripture, Jesus is coming back. It's what we believe. And some people say, I don't believe he's coming back. Okay, well, do you believe you're going to go then? Because if you don't know, we all have expiration date on our life. We believe he's coming back. If you say, I don't agree with that, okay, well, do you believe that you're going to go? Because every one of us, even you can tell by people around you, oh, we have an expiration date, and you believe that there's a judgment at the end of life, you need to know that people need the good news of Jesus Christ. And the, the love and the power and the goodness of God cannot be contained in this box of a building. It needs to flourish outside. Can I get an Amen. Number three, someone to the keyboard, please. Yeah, we are strategizing for the revival here, the revival there, and our next facility. We are strategizing to do that. Because when the Lord tells you something, it cannot be something you put on the back burner. It cannot be something that you go, well, I'm not really sure. When God tells you something and you know it's God, it has to be the thing you put on the front burner. As I'm sharing this, I'm guessing I may know, I may not, I may know what some of you are thinking. Sounds great, Pastor. I've got so many problems of my own. I can never be a part of that. I'm still dealing with addictions of my own. I'm still going through a challenging marriage of my own. I'm going through so much physically. You know, I, I should just deal with this first. And then I'll get back to you later because I have this going on in my life. 
I totally get how real and obvious that is in your mind. Because I've been there. I've been sitting in the crowd, twitching and stuttering, hearing people say, hearing people say, God had a plan for your life. And I'm like, it sounds good. I mean, it does. But I got all, I got all this. I got all this going on. So, I love the plan, but I kind of feel left out of the plan because the things that I'm hearing from the front of the stage require good and godly and perfect people. <laughs> I would hear people preach about how God had a plan. I would look at my life and go, yeah, nah. when I was younger, it's like, yeah, I was like, the call was in my heart since I was about 15. I wanted to do something for God, but so many times you'd be like, well, like, if I'm being honest, if I was sitting in your chair, some of you might be going, well, that's great for you. That's great for you because you're hearing God. But I'm in a total different level. I, I'm still struggling to keep my marriage alive. I can't even come to church regularly on Sunday. I had to fight to get here. I'm sharing custody with my ex, and we're going through a court battle. I totally get how real that is. But I want to appeal to you anyway that if you let that be the thing that keeps you from obeying what God is asking you to be involved in, you're literally choosing your pain and your drama over His purpose. And I want you to know, as much as you might not agree with me, I pray God would help you understand this and make it click in your heart. We literally choose our futures way more than we think. <laughs> the couple times in my life when I felt like I was going to be taken out, where it just wasn't good enough, I, too depressed, too overwhelmed, too insecure, if I had let that thing win, if I had let that dominate my life, I went through an ugly, crazy divorce years ago. Man, if I had let that thing win, do you know what I would have missed out on? I don't know when my last day on earth is. I do not know. But I'm telling you, if it was today, I have been so blessed by God. The things I get to see, the things I get to experience. I don't have a beautiful, lavish home. My car died three times on the, on the way to church today. I, don't, I might not be able to have a bunch of stuff to show you how great everything is. But because I said yes and chose his purpose over my pain, I pushed past all the depression and worries. I've been able to forget leading just to participate in the kingdom of God. Just to do something that I could see lives change, people grow. Young men become mature men of God. Old men begin to get the fire of God back in their eyes. I want to preach again. I want to serve God. To see people come and live in a community where we lift up Jesus and we work out our differences and just keep every Sunday post-COVID, pre-COVID, during COVID, just keep screaming to the whole world, He's still the King. And while other churches have sadly have to close, the resolve of this church is that we ain't quitting, we ain't giving up because he's put it in our hearts to stand and endure and we have all glory be to God. You get to choose. And you were thinking, well, let me get my business where it's supposed to be. I know that seems like the right thing. Maybe, I don't know this is true. Don't take this as gospel. You pray about this. Maybe, just, just, just maybe, what your business needs, just maybe, is your obedience to God. And when you do your obedience to God, God will just grant you the, th you know the doors you can't open on your own? You know the things you can't make work on your own? All those doors, that you, all the things that are stagnant in your life, all the things that aren't working, all the doors you keep trying to kick down, and no matter what you do, it's always a grind. 
You want to live in a system of God where he opens doors that no other man can open and he shuts the ones he don't want you to go through. And maybe what your life needs, what your family needs, I wasn't going to say this, but I, I feel led to say it. I was going through a court case, and someone was like, oh, what do you do? I was going through a court case while being divorced for about two years, going through a, a painful divorce with these three beautiful babies of mine that are all growing up. And while we would go to court, well, I tried not to let them know anything, but while we were going to court and dealing with pain, we were still going down to Sayonara Street every Monday night. And we were passing out food. We were singing songs, preaching the good news of Jesus. <clears throat> and it would be so easy. And to be honest, I even got some really well-meaning people's advice, and I know they meant the best. I, man, I don't fault them at all. Just take about a year and a half off and get your stuff together. Then come back. And I'm sure that's great advice. I don't fault them for that. But when I pray, trying to live by the Spirit, I knew in my, the old time Pentecostals say, you know in your knower, whatever a knower is. I knew if I let the enemy win and pull me and my kids out of purpose, I knew we'd be out of purpose for the rest of our life. I just knew it. I knew if I unplugged to handle this situation. Well, it's, it's big, and I, I get it. But I knew for me, if I'd have done it, I'd have disobeyed, and I wouldn't have seen all the things I get to see. I'm getting to see kids grow up in this church and do ministry and lead. I'm getting to serve with people that have been at this church from the beginning. You can see all the new families God has brought. God is blessing us with new and amazing people. I mean, you get to choose. I'm not saying abandon your responsibilities. Just make sure you got at least one foot in the water of it. You don't got to do everything, and you don't got to be at everything the church does. Absolutely not. This is not an attendance thing. This is you keeping your mind and your spirit. You, you, you can... You could be at work because you work on Sundays. If you haven't got that figured out yet, and you could be online shouting amen, but every five or six minutes online saying, this is my church, I'm ready, I'm with you. You can connect if you want to. The three things I want to ask today, three questions as we close up. Did I give you number three yet? Did I? Okay. Let's show them the It's Time update before we go to the end. you have that by chance? We're not only gonna, we're not only gonna build this, and not only gonna build the Del Paso Heights campus. We're still, we we're, 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 <laughs> I told you about three or four weeks ago where we were at in the process, just trying to stabilize and good be good stewards. And the Lord said, now it's time to go again on this. So, just so you know, we're raising three hundred fifty thousand. You guys have already given um, about two hundred and I think two seventy. And actually, the new number, there's only, uh, we're only, we're down to 70, that says 80,000, but since then, we only have $78,000 left to get to 350,000. <coughs> only 78 left. <coughs> That's through COVID. <coughs> That's through COVID. Can I just say something I want to say? The only church that will survive in the next 20, 30 years will be a resilient church. If you're looking for the easiest way to serve God, you might find it. The only church that will survive, and many are closing across it, will be a resilient church. It may be one of my favorite qualities about this church is just that we won't stop, we won't quit, because God deserves our best effort. So we're going we're gonna to begin to, we're, gonna, we, we're developing all this year, we're going to have open classes if you want to learn how to be a leader in this church, I take that back. We're going to have leadership classes for anyone. We're going to have level one leadership classes, level two, level three. If you want to learn how to be a leader and just grow, even if it's for your work, we're going to open up classes to anyone that wants to come. We're going to train our team leads. And if you're in this church, like, I want to learn more about leadership, 
We're going to open up these classes. You, We're ready to train people. We're ready to give people information. We're ready to bring up some other leaders. A lot of us have been holding it down for years. We're ready for all the rest of y'all to jump in, help us lead. The Lord says go forward. So we're raising money for that location. We're going to finish this up, get our new church in Jesus' name. Three things. One, I'm asking you to shake off anything that's holding you back. As we close today, just three things I'm going to ask. Number one, you just shake off whatever seems to be so pressing in your life that when God speaks to you and when God says it's time to advance, that something else is so much more important than that. Now, I get I just shared this with you today, and I get that this may take some time for it to bear witness in your spirit and be like, because I just got hit with it two days ago. So I kind of am blessed to have the privy information. But I pray that if this hits your heart the way it's hitting mine, and you trust that that's where we're going in Jesus' name, that you just begin to shake off all the limitations. Because it's the limitations the enemy will highlight on why you can't be involved in purpose. Live too far away, too old, too young, been through too much soccer games, raising kids. If you, You'll find a reason if you want one. I'm asking you, once this hits you in your spirit, and I pray it bears witness in your heart, I hope you would trust me to be honest. I really don't want your trust. I mean, I kind of do, but I'd really rather God hit you with this the way he hit me with it. I think that would be the best way that we could all agree. One, shake off anything that's holding you back. And two, I'm going to ask you to pray about, and this is something I felt the Lord told me to do, and you don't have to at all, but I'm going to ask, would you just pray about giving an offering, just a one-time offering? And to be honest, it's not towards any specific goal. I just felt in my heart like God wanted me to ask you, to challenge you. Some of us like give, you know, we give the same amount, just this regular routine of giving. Would you pray about giving a one-time generous offering? Just a one-time, just a regular, don't have to go to the building fund, don't have to go to, we're not raising money for any one thing. Just a one-time, whatever you normally give, if you would just do a one-time extra generous offering, just saying, I'm ready to shake some stuff up. Because if I want to do what I've never done before, I probably need to step into some things I've never stepped into before. I'm going to ask you to pray about that. If God tells you don't do it, then please do not do it if God tells you not to. But I'm going to ask you if you'll pray about it. And just give a one-time offering saying, I'm ready, I'm ready for the same old, same old. I'm ready for that season to be done in my life. I want to shake it up. And I felt impressed that God said an offering would be a way to do it. And the third thing, I'm going to ask you to just fully engage in this season. If you've kind of been, you know, I, you know, I go to church. But you know the words fully engaged. Fully engaged, and to be honest, I'm not even talking about, I'm really not talking about even attendance or hard work. I'm really not even talking about any of that. Fully engaged in, I'm ready to say yes to what the Lord is doing in this season. There's a hundred different ways you can support a local church. You know that? You could do it from here. I've got some friends that may be watching. They live in Texas now. They're excited about our new building. They've been sending money. I'm like, hey, I said, they said, hey, we're sending some money to your church. I go, well, don't you have a home church? We don't have a home church out there. We've been watching you online. We're just sending the money. Yeah. You know how encouraging that is for people that live across the states to say, hey, we saw you online. We, we, we like what we hear God's doing. We just want to support. You can encourage people. You can love people. You don't have to lift stuff and move. You don't got to quit your job. Come on, someone. But just remove all your distractions and saying, I'm going to fully engage in this season. Not fully engage in the same old, same old, another Sunday, same old, back to work on Monday. I'm going to fully engage in there's something new happening. And I can't wait to see what role I can have, small or big, in moving this thing forward and being a part of the kingdom of God. 
fully engaging to me isn't isn't necessarily just money or just attendance or how much you work. Not at all. Fully engaging for what I believe the Lord is saying is just accepting and believing that this season is going to be new. And I'm open for the new things God wants to do in me so I can expand in all those areas that are dead, that are stagnant, that haven't grown in years, that aren't any better. I'm submitting all those to the Lord. And I'm fully engaging in He's going to grow things out of me, move things in me, and we're going to begin to see a church grow. I'm believing. It's, it's my hope and belief like it's never grown before. We may, I don't know for sure, we may, this may be the one, we may, this, the new building, another, we may just be on the promises that's been over this church for about 20 years. We may be on the brink of walking into it right now. We absolutely may. So would you pray about those three things? Give a financial offering. If you don't want to and you pray about it and God says don't do it, obey God and don't do it. Be fully engaged and throw off anything that was just holding you back to, so you're just stuck. Because I think you and me both know if you don't throw off that thing that's holding you back, you know that reason that's so important to you? I think you already kind of know I'll probably be stuck exactly where I'm at for the rest of my life. The Bible says throw off everything, the sin and the weights that hold us down so we can run to win. Would you just bow your heads right where you're at? I'm going to ask you right now just to pray about those three things. Holy Spirit, I pray you speak to your people. I've spoken to them, but you do so much of a better job than I ever could. Speak to your people about what they need to do in this next season. Speak to them. You spoke to me and it fired me up and got me so excited. My mind began to change. Ideas begin to flourish out of me. Father, do the same to them. I pray this prayer is witness to every heart give us the mentality of going forward and advancing and expanding. Not same old, same old. Not same people, same rhythm. No, no, no. Expansion. God, from a dream team of 70 plus to 150. From a few leaders to to 50 leaders. Two hundred people to 500 people just for your glory, oh God. Help us to catch this in the name of Jesus. Speak to your people. Make it clear, oh God. And I pray that you would give them the same confidence you've given me so we can walk together in Jesus' mighty name. Everyone said amen.